Hello friends, welcome to this video. Friends, in this video, I will discuss about the ECG changes that are associated with the electrolyte imbalances. Basically about the sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and their ECG changes that we will see in our clinical cases. This video will be helpful for the NEED PG, INI and FMG aspirants as well as for the final year MBBS students. So do listen till the end of this video and I will cover most of the important points regarding this topic and also with the mnemonics of the ECG changes. So first of all friends, we will see about the potassium and its effect on ECG changes. And first we will cover about the hypokalemia. So in hypokalemia, as the level of potassium goes down, so you can correlate with it, like if potassium goes down, T wave also goes down. Basically it is T wave inversion and ST depression. Now friends, one characteristic finding of hypokalemia, if you spell hypo like H-Y-P-U, then you can remember that U wave, prominent U wave is seen in hypokalemia. So, T wave inversion, ST depression and prominent U waves are seen in hypokalemia. But one thing that is prolonged in hypokalemia that is inversely proportional to the levels of the electrolytes is the QT interval. So, in hypokalemia, QT prolongation is seen and that will lead to torsades depointis and sudden cardiac death in these patients of hypokalemia. So, friends, these are all the findings that you have to remember for your examination. You can see from the ECG and you can see there is a pushing effect on the ECG. And overall, what are the changes you can see? U wave, prominent U wave, T wave inversion, ST depression and prolonged QT interval. And now friends, coming to hyperkalemia. And in hyperkalemia, you can correlate it like that. If potassium levels goes up, there is T wave increase, basically peak of T wave. And you will see prolongation of PR with flattening. Basically, the amplitude of P wave will down, but the duration of PR will increase. So, what will be increasing in hyperkalemia? T wave amplitude will increase and prolongation of PR interval. You can see from the image also. And friends, one more thing is increased that is QRS wave. And widening of QRS is seen with hyperkalemia. So, you have to remember three things that are increased. T wave, wide QRS and prolongation of PR with increased level of potassium. And ultimately, with increasing severity of hyperkalemia, you will see sine wave, ventricular fibrillation, and ultimately cardiac arrest. MCQ may ask in which phase of cardiac cycle, then you must remember in the diastole phase of uh, cardiac cycle. So friends, you can see in the picture also that the features of the hyperkalemia are tall peak T waves, prolonged PR interval, and widened QRS. And this will be a pulling effect on the ECG due to hyperkalemia. So, most of the things are increasing here with increased level of potassium. One thing that is decreasing is the amplitude of P wave and this will lead to the flattening of P wave. And also one thing you must remember is the uh, phase in which cardiac arrest will be seen with increasing levels of potassium and that is diastole. So, this is the discussion about the potassium and its effect on ECG. Now, we will cover the calcium and its effect on ECG. So friends, first of all, we will see about hypocalcemia. And as I have told earlier also, that lowering of electrolyte levels will lead to an inversely increase in QT interval. So here also, as the calcium lower, uh, levels goes down, long QT interval will be seen. Then friends, how will you differentiate with the long QT interval of other electrolytes? So in the question, the clinical features will be mentioning about the hypocalcemia features like titany, spasm and the clinical findings of so was sign and trozo sign and you can see from the ECG that QT prolongation is seen in this case with the clinical features of titany, so was sign and <laughs> trozo sign then the answer will be hypocalcemia and the levels will be like uh, less than 9 uh, mg per deciliter. Now friends coming to hypercalcemia and in hypercalcemia the levels of calcium is like greater than 10.5 mg per deciliter and here also the uh, QT interval will be inversely proportional to the levels of the electrolytes. So, as the level of LCM goes up, the QT level will be shortening in nature. So, here short QT interval will be seen and also we know as the levels of calcium increase in cardiac cells, the heart rate goes up and also the contractility goes up. So, QRS will be taller. Basically, the amplitude will increase in nature. So, you can see from the ECG only that short QT interval is seen and tall uh, QRS uh, wave is also seen in case of hypercalcemia. And what are the clinical features? We know the mnemonic that is painful bones and renal stones, abdominal groans and psychiatric overtones. 
So with these clinical features and the ECG finding and the levels of calcium, you can easily say that this is the ECG of an hypercalcemic patient. So friends, this is the discussion about the hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia. Now we will discuss about the magnesium and its effect on ECG. See friends, magnesium and calcium behaves more or less similarly. So in case of decreased level of magnesium, there is increased excitability seen in the cardiac cells. So you can see as the level of magnesium goes down, increased level of uh, QT interval and also this will lead to torsadis de pointis that is long QT syndrome and ultimately leading to ventricular tachycardia. So you have to remember only that fact that hypomagnesium can lead to uh, increase excitability of the cardiac cell and increase QT interval. And friends, similarly, hypermagnesemia will lead to decreased excitability of the cardiac cells and short QT interval. This will lead to the AVN block, AV conduction block and lead to PR prolongation and QRS widening. So this is you have to remember in case of hypermagnesemia and hypomagnesemia. Main thing is about the potassium and calcium changes on uh, ECG. Now friends, coming to the sodium and its effect on ECG. Actually friends, there is no significant, clinically significant effect of sodium in ECG because sodium mainly affects the CNS. So you can uh, remember like this, sodium and CNS and S and C similarly sound. So you can remember sodium will affect CNS and ECG changes will be predominantly by the um, uh, potassium and calcium. So this is all from this topic and this will cover your most of the previous year questions from this topic and also the upcoming question. If you have any doubt regarding this topic, you can comment in the comment section. So friends, this is a question for you all guys and in this ECG, you can see the ECG changes and tell me the diagnosis according to the ECG changes. Which electrolyte deficiency or excess can you suspect in this case? And tell me the diagnosis in the comment section. I will be telling you the answer in the next video. And friends, if you like this video, do share and subscribe the channel. I will be making such high yield topic series in future. And this will be helpful for you all guys for your entrance examination. Thank you for watching the video. Take care. Goodbye.